four-man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh, no. Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five-man light bomb. They're going to follow up, and they're going to get one, two, three kills. And it's going to be everybody dying. Oh, my God. When does this happen? Everybody's dead. I didn't realize I was muted. I, like, unmuted myself in OBS, but I didn't unmute my own microphone. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, hi. It's me again. For a third game in a row. For a third match in a row. Getting wild, I know. I almost equaled half of my total cast last season. <laughs> and we're running out of replays, because apparently everyone likes replay casting all of a sudden, which is unfortunate for someone such as me, who lives in a different time zone and can only do replay casts. <laughs> So, hey, people who are doing replay casts, can you, like, not <laughs> for, like, five seconds? Nah, no, 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 it's all right. Anyway, we have... <sighs> it's B-West, isn't it? That's, like, for one thing I forgot to update, isn't it? Someone's going to yell at me, like, oh, you got fang rock. Yeah, I do. It's B-West. Anyway, today, tonight, wherever you are. We have another replay, this time of CM Breaking Meta, which... Which I'm a fan of a CM teams. I like a good CM team. I got I got a few people I I know and like of the CM teams. Facing Gambit Gaming, which I do know also have a few people that I've I like on their team as well. So should be fun. Should be fun. It's a good B West game. I love I love a good Div B game. Div B Div C. I feel like it. Don't get enough appreciation. So I'm here as a Div C player <laughs> with a. Div D casting style <laughs> to um, talk about a Div B game. And this game, actually, I feel it very much echoes of the last match, where we see Praxis and Tomb of Spider Queen have been banned by CM Breaking Meta, and Venival Sky and Garden of Terror have been banned by Game, the Gambit Gaming, which I think were banned both in my last match as well. And now we have Dragon Shire as the first map, which coincidentally, was also the first map of the last series that I casted. So without further ado, I am going to actually, before I forget pushing right buttons, I'm going to get us into the game and let's get things going. Oh, it's Chris. Good to see people connect. It's nice casting during the day, during the day for me because I actually see people actually show up. Anyway, on the left-hand side of CM Breaking Meta, we see Wipeout on the very end, which maybe smash i imagine believe is on the leoric clems on the d -d 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 hanzo hoxanos on the rhaegar and skycake is on the stitches and on the right hand side of gambit gang we have gg Crizo on i'm not going to save a gg for everyone Crizo on the bright wing troll and rhino on the Garrosh. I was going to say the angry man. Garrosh. Persimian on the... Wait, is there an extra knife there? I don't know. Pris Piri Simon? Piri Simon? Piri Simon? On the... Orphea. Izo on the... Hoppy Deer. Best Deer. Lunara. And last soon not least, Dan Solo 56 on the Space Yoshi itself. Dahaka. Anyway, did see I did hear a polymorph coming out. Slims does take a decent amount of damage. Start Hanzo is maybe not a super big fan of stepping out in front of the gate anymore. As we do see that first wave advantage is kind of going over to the side of Gambit Gaming. And we do see Troll and Rhino just keeping an eye on that vision, making sure no one is in immediate danger as Vision Arrow does come out. Per oh, that's an L, not an I. Ah, oh, Pilsen. Pearl Simon? I don't know. Either way, we do see a lot of damage coming out as Hoxanos gets actually relatively low, but however, a kill wasn't quite able to be found on the Rhaegar as they back out, despite the Orphea getting a bit aggressive, getting wanting that kill, chomping it a bit. <laughs> I was hoping she'd use chomp on the wave as I said that, because that would have been a ha-ha funny. Instead, no, now I look like an asshole because I tried to predict things. I know, right? Look, Ekta, in saying that, uh, Rowan Esports, I think... There was at least one, maybe two, who didn't have the R1E at the start of it as well. So, And I know for some people it costs $10 to change their name. So I'm not going to judge too much about people not changing their name. Because $10 is like a bunch of 
ramen noodles, man. <laughs> like, a bunch of, like, ramen noodles as well. Like, that can get you a lot. I was accidentally zoomed in. And we actually have objectives up for both sides. We do see that in the top lane, we do see Dahak has taken that bottom lane. We do see that Skycake took it. So, even flip, and we do... There's Smash. That's going to be a scary blow-up for anyone. Even... Garrosh is not exactly safe with that around because his main bit of his kit is his armor. And with Wipeout Smash doing minus 25 armor, there's not a lot that you can do. It's not a safe place for Garrosh. It makes it very scary for him. Dancehall is also getting double soaked throughout all of this, and we're just letting Leoric kind of. I say that, but he did have it. But Leoric is kind of having to do his best to keep that off. Wipeout is kind of. Slowly slapping Dan. But there's two people here. I do like that this top bruiser has been taken by the side of Granite Grant Gaming, getting that extra macro pressure on. However, Leoric did go Neil Peasant, which means he'll get it a bit quicker. Wipeout actually getting relatively low. If Izo, 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 Izo was there to also follow up on Wipeout, maybe that would have been a kill, but it's a bit hard to say as well. The damage wasn't quite there. We do see. Him trying to dismount. Skycake getting hit. Well, that's just a little little bit of pestering. Skycake doesn't quite find the hook on anyone. Does, do like the effort, though. Do like the effort. Always appreciate the effort. As we do so, now see that the side of Gam Gamba Gang is being pushed in on by CM Breaking Meta. As Wipeout is stepping on objective, Pearl per Simon does back out. Does get the chomp. Wipeout is actually in a lot of danger. Tlems is just poking from underneath. Feeling a bit safe, but not all that safe in all honesty. Strong row does hit. We do see the jump over the wall from Tlems. Pearl Simmon is actually in taking a lot of damage, getting relatively low. Fortunately, Crizzo was in a perfect spot where it means Pearl Simmon didn't take any of those scatter arrows. And they'll be first objective going over to the side of Gambit Gaming. Much quicker than the last game where it was about 10 minutes by the time the first one was picked up. This one was only four. Oh, that is a... Was it Stitches who was kicked, or was it Hanzo? Either way, Hanzo goes down. That is very bad timing. I missed him out. I really missed that. And Dragon Knight is just doing a little dance. Smash comes out with Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight loses armor. Wipeout gets booted. As we do see, there is push going on bottom. Bottom tower is already down, which... Every time I look at the insides of these towers... Sorry, I'm getting a bit distracted. Like, you do wonder how they work, like, fully. Because it's just a bunch of gears. Like, what's leading the bullets up? It's a lot of wood, like, there's a shell, oh, it's gone, let's have a look at this one. You can see it kind of gears turning, this, like, thing sticking out, it doesn't make sense. It was Hanzo kicked, I was right, cool, I did catch that, that's so unfortunate. That is so damn unfortunate <laughs> for the Hanzo there, but sometimes that is just how the cookie crumbles, as we do see that the red team does have a little bit of advantage, it's still not nothing major. I believe goes down to Dahaka. So offlane just sometimes stops existing for me. I should be I should really be watching this more, but I was like, uh, let's just watch this down here, not even thinking about the top lane. As you do see now, Siege Giants have been taken by both sides. Gonna be a relatively even fight. Leoric is already back up, thank you to that trait of his. He's not never down for too long. Variant is also mid, so gonna be rotating down, imagine now that Leoric's able to get that mid soak. And we do see just the red team is doing the best to clear away the damage. Clear away the sieges. And have they still got their own up? Torn Rhino is stepping up. Looks like he wants to get a throw. Does get a throw on the Wipeout. Does get a stun. Sea Giant pulled in. Wipeout is actually stuck in between the team. We do see Eternal Feast used by Orphea and taunt by Garrosh, meaning that will be a very dead variant. Now that we've mentioned Heroics, we do actually see that Warlord's challenge is picked up by Garrosh. Blink heal by Brightwing. Isolation by Dahaka. Leaping Strike by Lunara. And I actually am going to check this. Eternal Feast by Orphea. And on the right hand, on the left hand side for CM Breaking Meta, we do see Putrid Bile picked up by Stitches, not Gorge. Oh, I, I do love a good Bloodlust. I do like a good Bloodlust comp. Bloodlust by Varegar. I've only just realized this now. Hanzo has actually got Auto Attack Quest, and we do see Dragon Arrow on top of it. Variant Smash was at level 4. That's why I kind of glossed over it, but I will mention it. And in turn by Luroc, there is the Bloodlust. There is Chol and Rhino stuck in the corner. Eternal Feast comes out under them. And that will actually be 
the Auric going down first. Wipeout is also being hit by it. Protect does get out of time. Sky KK with some no dangerous spot. And that will be G Granite. Not Granite Gaming. Ga Gambit. Gambit Gaming taking out two team team members of CM Breaking Meta. They're in a very dominant spot so far, but as I said with the last game where there was a Rhaegar and a Hanzo about. It does feel like it is. And it's, it's just, it does feel like it's one hook away from going all wrong constantly. That's always what I feel like with um, Stitches comps. Like yeah, it can be going pretty poorly for a long time, but that one hook that you find can just end end a push. It can end a um, team fight before it starts. It can end a game. So it'll be interesting to see if Skycake, once Fishing Hook comes in, can get that kill. They're in a very good spot. Minus healing coming out. Nice. We do see Skycake very low. The Rhaegar barely got off the chain heal in time. I could because that kick would have killed. That Dragonite swing would have killed Skycake, but that is it. Chrysal actually gets hooked. And Blair? Chris? Believe, can you stop dying while I'm talking about other things? But right, that was the Auric going down. That is the side of CM Breaking Meta kind of struggling a little as 13s are now through for the side of Gambit Gaming as they are taking the lead. Dragon Arrow comes out. That actually could be an Orphea kill. We do see Hoxano skin kicked over the back line. Actually, that is Brightwing going down first, then followed by Orphea second. And that is kind of the kills that CM Breaking Meta need. But we do see Hanzo complete his quest. That means. <coughs> He is able to give that damage. I mentioned Skycake has hook up soon. There it is. Dan Solo is next to go. And that is a very important fight for the side of CM breaking meta. Because that brings them back in it now. They have those 13s. They have that fishing hook. They have the talents now to fight. So what was once looking very one-sided now looks like it can go either way. That one, those one, two kills, it always is the stuff that kind of means you are able to swing it back in your favor, and it'll be interesting to see what happens moving into it. Oh my god, what am I doing? Camp has been pinged. We just do have a lot of safe play currently. Hazo is currently in the worst spot, but he is backing out, obviously afraid of the Garrosh throwing him over a wall, despite him having... I imagine he'd still have jump up. I'm just going to mute myself quickly while I take a drink. I love, I love water. God damn. Like, a nice cold water on a warm day is great. It's not a warm day, but it's warm in my house, and I am sweating. <laughs> oh, there's a excellent hook onto Pilsimon. And that's what I was saying. One hook can really change momentum, because now we have another member of... Ga I keep going to call it Granite Gaming. That's a CCL team. That's not this. Uh, but yeah, one hook can really change the momentum of things, as now Gambit Gaming is... Despite still being up in structures and kills and even experience, it almost feels like they're playing off a back foot now. There seems it does feel a bit scared, almost or interesting enough to say. As we now see, um, Sam Breaking Meta is pushing into the fort, doing the best. Nice tongue from Dan Solo. Hoaxenos goes relatively low, and they just tr they can't quite get that kill. Unfortunately, maybe if they had Orthia up there. Again, that's why I was like, yeah, maybe if Orpheus are there. Good good work by the red team. Make sure they aren't hit by that in turn. However, Bloodlust has popped and that move speed and attack damage, uh, attack speed bonus just is a bit too much for Dahaka to handle as they will go down. I was going to say, with Bloodlust, I imagine we see, yeah, auto attack Leoric. 16s, however, are still first through first with the side of Gambit Gaming, which we do see Fro coming out of Skycake. Kick. Dragon Arrow. Oh! Pilsman actually manages to queue back into it. Does manage to get the... Does actually manage to get out still. We see Hook coming out into Troll and Rhino. Troll and Rhino backs out. We do see a lot of ults used. We saw Feast. We saw Taunt. We saw... Dragon Arrow. We saw Bile. Like, a lot was used and no one died. Very good play by both teams. Believe nearly gets away with it. Dan Solo rushes out of a bush. Gets smashed for his efforts and actually is getting relatively low. We can see Tomb coming out. Dan Solo getting the silence off onto Leoric. However, Leoric with that percent damage auto attacks now getting faster and faster as time going along will be a bit too much for 
Dark in a handle, and that is actually true. Crizzo pulled back in, and that is now to another two quick kills from the side of Gambit Gaming. And as I kind of said, once we see the 13s come around, we see Fishing Hook coming in. I don't even, I don't actually know if I mentioned Fishing Hook specifically, but I mentioned hooks in general. Now that Fishing Hook has come in, Skycake is hitting those hooks, and it is becoming such a problem. Troll and Rhino actually gets relatively low there, a bite, a few hits, and they get relatively low, and actually. Hanzo has got a lot of single tag target. I don't see flawless technique picked often. I do like it. It's interesting. It's unique. But I do like it. As we do see that middle building is now being pushed into by the four man of Sia breaking meta as the Dragonite is pushing bottom despite its low health. It looks like the team is regrouping. They're making a decision about what to do next someone has messaged me once again i keep getting distracted whoops the hell is doing that and now we see that dk going down believe is backing out getting chased down by pearl simon troll and rhino is actually catching up believe is healing as much as they can however you can't quite heal through that much as taunt comes out and that will be an excellent kill coming out onto the leora kind of what gambit gaming needed to kind of stop the endless kind of Pressure that CM Breaking Meta has been putting in since level 13. It will give him a little bit of a, a little bit of time to catch a breath, so to speak. However, Believe has given... Believe missed the bucket. But is giving vision of that camp as we see now. A fight is about to break down. The Haka is considering coming in. Yep, we do see Baru coming in now. And that will be Siege Camp being taken. No. Uh, yep, Siege Camp is taken by the red team. However, that is... Not a fight you want to be taking anymore if you are CM breaking meta, as we do see Skykick doing their best to back out. And, but fingers about... That was a smash coming out onto the Dahaka. Dahaka taking down Troll and Rhino and Krizzo now both caught in the taunt. Krizzo was able to blink out, sorry. The, uh, da -da 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 in tomb. Krizzo blink out, however, Garrosh wasn't. Pearl Simmons now in danger, getting hit by Skykick's hook. And here's what I'm saying constantly. Hook can change games. Hook is a brutal ability, even at the best of times. And we do see now Skycake and Hoaxanos is pushing an objective. Clems has decided to join the party and help get that keep. Fort, keep, fort, keep, keep. Keep is the front ones, fort is the back ones. That's more to me than anyone else, because I'm dumb. Anyway, back to the action. We do see the red team trying their best to stay in this now. As the roles have been reversed, we do see now the... um. Oh, sorry, I'm stretching. That means my camera work is terrible whenever I stretch because I don't have a hand free because I'm stretching. We see Gamma Gaming is now a bit scared of what's happening as they are behind in the experience now. If they don't have an advantage that they had in the first place. Huh. That may be something to point out to, um... What's his name? So Storm Talents, we see that... Oh, I don't know, actually. Not. Gift of the Embalmer is picked up by Stitches, so that cooldown reduction extra damage. Rhaegar went Pit Fighter, which is a choice that you don't see all that often. Smash upgrade from Varian, more smashes with an AoE splashing. Uh, Bullseye from Hanzo, and that ever present Buried Alive from Leoric. And saying that level 20s aren't too far off for Gambit Gaming either, so that talent tier may be able to, like, maybe the turnaround that is needed. So we'll see how this goes. Because we do see a lot of damage coming out. But, like, a lot of safe play for the most part at this point. Dragonite is getting that fort. Believed is front over, however, Lyric is probably the one. That does get out. GG Ezo does actually get taken out by because of the um hook. I nearly called Garrosh, but no, it was a Stitches hook. They try leaping strike out, however, not quite enough health to get through all that. We see Dragonite giving the good old boot to <laughs> Troll and Rhino, cutting him back in the score. And it looks like actually the blue team's considering ending here. We do see Bloodless coming out. We just see Troll and Rhino being run. It does get a double throw, does get a double sub. However, it does get out the taunt. These stones from the core doing a lot. If that Eternal Feast has been going off for a while, it is hungered. As level 20 is worth through for the side of Granite, Granite. Gambit gambling as well. Pearl Simmon does get pulled in. If Pearl goes down here, that may be all she wrote. That's free down now. Why about having to back out? And 
Hoax and Oz doing their best to keep everyone up. That level four coming in handy, just trying to keep people alive. We do see Hook coming out, and that will be a full five man and the first game of the series going over to see him breaking meta. GG to both sides. Let me throw it on over to my game summary screen. Which will always have text on it because I don't know how to get rid of it. I'm not the brightest tool in the shed, but I am a tool. Anyway, we see that there was a lot of damage done by Orphea. God damn, sorry, I just looked at that now. I'm like, Whoa. But yeah, just that ultimately that turnaround with Smash Varian, meaning you don't need a lot of damage to kill someone because they will die with minus armor. And that kind of really came to fruition once Hook came online. Like Gambit Gaming was fine all the way up to level 12, 13, when they just lost two very quick, and then once Fishing Hook came in, it was just a constant stream of like hooks into being one or two down the whole time. So this series, while it did kind of look one-sided by the end of it, like if you just look at this, you're like, oh, okay. Blue team wasn't, CM Breaking Meta wasn't varnished for most time. No. <laughs> no, that would be wrong. No, it very much can still be Granite Gaming. Ga Gambit Game. Fuck me. I swore. Sorry. It can still very go much go over to Gambit Gaming. As they are. They were very competitive throughout that whole game. So I'd like to see where the next map goes, which I'll find out what it is in just a few moments. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show talents. Anything, anything stand out to people? Anything stand out to me? Yeah. It's not often that we see flawless technique and ignore all distractions. I do like that it was picked up here. It's, it kind of did a lot of work. Interesting to see Wellspring now since there were nerfs to it. But otherwise, nothing is standing out too much. So what I'm going to do for a moment is I am going to not push wrong buttons. I am going to change it back over to my map view screen. I'm going to put myself on mute for a little bit while I get the next map set up, but I'll be back in just a few moments. So, in absolute echoes of the last game, we have <laughs> we have Infernal Shrines directly after <laughs> Dragonshire. However, will this go to a map free? I will find out soon enough. These teams already know. So let's hop into the action as I click for I was about to click for wrong scene. Let's go. Starting with CM breaking meta, we have Clems on the Probius. Uh, Believe on the Sonya, Wipeout on May, Hoaxanos on Brightwing, and Skycake on the Maiv. On the right hand side, we have something a bit. Oh. My heart's with. My heart's with, um, Granite. Not Granite, Gambit Gaming here. As we see, my favorite hero, Ufa, being played by Crizzo. Troll and Rhino on the. Mirrodin. We do see Dan Solo on the Auric. We see Pearl Simmon on the, I don't know if I already mentioned them, on the Orphea. And we see Izo on the Rhaegar, which is roll swap, but could be interesting. Skykick does get hit by the Ufa Hammer, as we do see a lot of damage coming out. As I don't know, I legitimately don't know which way this can go. Both these comps are relatively unique in the sense that it's not our standard kind of either triple front line, like double bruiser or standard double 
mate, double range. So instead we see a kind of... We still see a triple front line by the side of CM Breaking Meta, but... Skycake is going to go down. Well, I was going to say is Maev is a very unique one in that regard, where they are act, they can act as a um, engage, which they can then use to pull into the May Blizzard, which will be interesting to see if they pull it off consistently. And then on the other side, we actually have kind of old school hyper carry comp, except with Pearl Simon on the um, Orthia instead of what you'd typically see. Yeah, I'll pull up Talents in just a few moments. Give me a moment. There we go. Oh my god, Probius is already at 12, ch 12 stacks of Warp Resonance. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, other things to note here is Maev kind of is going that kind of camping ability with Naisha's Memento. Other things to note is Ufa is actually going into that standard healing build with... This is, this is what I use from Solar Heal Ufa with Wave of Light. So it'll be interesting to see where we go from here. We see level fours are through first with the side of Gamma Gaining, soon to be followed by the side of CM Breaking Meta. Let's see, yep, everything's making sense. Orphea Q build is one to actually kind of makes the is maybe the most interesting one here that I can see so far. As it's not often you see it. You typically see um the auto attack build, but Q build if you're hitting your Qs, especially into a triple frontline comp such as CM Breaking Meta is running, you can get a lot done. And Maev also went the stacking knives, telling that uh, pin down at four, so see how that one goes. It can work into double support, especially because Ufa still technically another frontline. So both these teams are technically running triple frontline, while um, te technically running triple frontline while only having one bruiser, one tank apiece. We do see Dan Solo is actually getting pushed out a little bit here. Not where you want to be if you're the uh, Bruiser. Dan Solo does get pulled in. Believe is getting phase shifted upon. Does get the Beyblade going in the middle of a wave. And Wipeout going pretty safe as well. Objective is bottom. So we're that out. And everyone's up here. It's Dan Solo stepping up. Doesn't have Entomb yet. Entomb's still a little bit off. So yeah, we do see Orphea has started. Objective is getting so quickly. Just going... Sevens sound like a good idea. Which, yeah, sevens do sound like a good idea. Sevens have pretty good talents for both teams. Ufa will have cleanse. Orphea has more damage. Stun on wipeout. Either way, sevens come through first for the side of Gambit Gaming. We do see going in on Troll and, Troll and Rana to go in on the enemy team. Dance is actually getting relatively low. Does get the unstop coming out of him through that walk. And that'll actually be Probius taking him down first with his Rift Warp. We see Troll and Rhino is now in a position. Takes out actually a pylon on their way out. And we do see Rhaegar's getting peppered down. Wipeout's doing their best to zone. Prezzo walks up to hit with a hammer, doing their best. We do see Dan Sol hits point in the middle. And actually that's Frozen Punisher going over to the side of Gambit Gaming. And despite being down a talent. That is a good fight for the side of CM Breaking Meta, and Simmons have only just come through now, which I will keep up just for a few moments more. As Probius very much is leaning into that E talent. And we do see Skycake getting a good pull, however, it is stuck in an awkward position. Fortunately, Frozen Punisher is going to help out a lot, as it will stop the buildings from attacking her just a bit too much. We do see now Pearl Simmon, Pearl Simmon is doing the best to clear it. Dan Solo gets a nice swipe on the enemy team. Troll and Rhino doesn't quite find their mark with anything. We do see Wipeout taking a lot of damage as Skullcracker is doing their best to keep them in. We do hear a reset from Skycake. That's another reset from Skycake. And Skycake is doing their best. They got three resets in a row, but not quite able to find anyone yet as they only have one stack of pin down. Once that gets higher, that will definitely do a lot more. But until then, it's not quite enough. GG Ezo is getting chased down by Skycake, but fortunately, thank you to that. Wolf form, they aren't able to catch them out. So Rhaegar gets to live another day, while the side of Gambit Gaming, I said it correctly that time, no, Gambit Gaming is pushing in while the side of CM Breaking Meta is getting that camp. Which just lets them have a little bit more pressure mid, which is not quite something you're wanting to see with your Gambit Gaming currently. However, the, fight, the teams are still pretty close in terms of Sokka's not too far. Troll and Rhino is starting to clear the camp already. 
Prezo gets a nice little W, slapping Wipeout just a little bit. Just, just, have a stomach, just a little Puku slap. I realize I said Puku, and then no one's going to know even what language that is, let alone <laughs> what that word means. Puku is a uh, te reo Māori word for stomach. That's a little, that's a little line bus fact of the day. A little bit of language line. Uh, yeah, so if you want to talk about stomachs, just say a little Puku. Puku being Māori for stomach, and yeah. There you go, the more you know. Tens of proof of both sides after I ranted about one of my uh, <laughs> native languages for a bit. We do see Warden's Cage coming out from. Yeah, Warden's Cage from Maev. Invisible Friend. Not Invisible Friends. Blink Heel from Brightwing. Avalanche from May. Nullgate from Probius. And Leap from Sonya. Which I can see how this is going to go now. That's an excellent combo you got going there. And then on the other side, we have Muradin actually jumping in and getting stuck in that wall, getting hit down by Probius, losing half his health in not too long a time as they do manage to back out. But we see Avatar from Muradin, Divine Shield from Ufa. Bear not buried alive. Entomb from Leoric, which, surprise, surprise. Skykick actually managed to jump over the sun. We do see the combo coming out. We actually see dropping of... Oh. Just Pilsim is taking out. We see, we've seen one, two, three ults so far. We see four ults so far. We see Skycake getting resets. We see Nullgate coming out. Skycake actually getting relatively low. GG Ezo getting hit by the stun. They're actually keeping Pilsim alive as Ufa was also keeping everyone alive while they were in that kind of spirit form with their Q. And that was a big fight. And only losing one in that fight is impressive by both sides, especially that only... Ufa went down, and Ufa is already back up. Wait, did Ufa actually go down? Oh, it was that one. Yes, I think Ufa did go down. As you do see now, the top Bruiser camp is taken. As Skycake just kind of quickly dodges around. Does get hit by a decent amount of damage, but that bright wing phase shift doing best to get him up. We do excellent in turn by Leoric. Follow up with the... Uh, Eternal Feast, but Skycake actually had Blink to get out. If they didn't, well, not Blink, they had um the E bit, E talent to get out, so they don't actually go down. Very good stuff by that my if player up there. Skycake, Skycake. You do now see the side of Gambit Gaming just trying to clear what they can. Ezo, oh my gosh, I've accidentally pushed mine on my side button. As we do zoom back out, we do see a stun come out. Wipeout, wipeout, doing best get out. Leap comes out, hitting both Orphea and Dan Sol. Per Persimmon and Dan Solo. As Persimmon is actually being dove on by Belief. And that Avalanche getting the Dan Solo and GG Ezo out of there. As there's a lot of damage coming out. However, both teams are holding on. Gambit Gaming does have the little bit of advantage on the objective for now. However, the experience advantage is now over the side of C and breaking meta. As we do see the red team is pushing in once again. Skycake gets stunned, they're stuck in a wall, Warden Cage comes out. As the team walks out, we do see that is the Eternal Feast drop. My gosh, there's a slaughter buns pushing each of these. See Dan Solo. Troll and Rhino actually gets taken out by this the Probius E quest. E walk for it once again. Wipeout having to back out as they're getting Leoric sucked to death. The Skycake will be soon to follow and while wow. <coughs> Sorry. Well, it is one for one. That is the side of... Well, not even one for one anymore. Two for one now. And Gambit Gaming was actually able to give the objective. This, yeah, that's what I said like, last game. That even though it what looks like it was a bit more in the CM Breaking Meters favor by the end. It's, there's, two, there's actually very close game so far. Sure, we can see that objective's actually been burnt down so far. Already less than half its health left. We could also see that the red team is keeping the tip. I keep calling them Gant Red Team because I'm just afraid I'm going to call them Grant again. Gambit Gaming is very much getting that down and are still in this. Leoric pushing top. He's got three members mid. Crizo is now probably not in a good spot. Crizo does get hit. Does use D shield to actually get out. We do hear another reset from Maev. However, at that point, it doesn't matter too much as both teams are kind of passive at that point. As you do see now, pushing onto Siege Camp. As Pilsim and Crizo and are doing it. We see Rhaegar picking up Soak. Rhaegar very good at that for a healer. And we do see Troll and Rhino is just kind of holding high. Making sure no one pushes in on them. While 
CM Breaking Meta did very much the same thing. And now we do see CM Breaking Meta stepping on the bottom camp. Wipeout has an eye on the team. Actually, they can all see with the team up. However, that's camp already done. John Rhino doesn't quite make it in there in time. And however, that's also a dangerous spot to be. We do hear cleanse coming out from, I don't know if it's Rhaegar or Ufa, hard sell. Probably Ray, probably Ufa, I'd imagine. Rhaegar may be using his more briefly. John Rhino does drop out of, jump out of Warden's Cage, which surprised it didn't bring him back in. But yeah, that's an excellent kind of use of ultimates. We're getting out some major abilities now because Warden's Cage is still another 90 seconds away. Avalanche also. We do see Leap hitting Orphea and Dan Solo was actually unstopped during the time it came out. However, Orphea is first to go down once again to that Probius Riff. Probius is on fire this game. Like, god damn. Buridan jumps out. We do see Maev considering going in after them. However, the side of CM Breaking Meta is playing a bit passive now. They're going, actually... Let's just get 16s. We're a level closer. Which, they are indeed a level closer to 16s. As I wrap myself further in my blanket because it's suddenly getting cold all of a sudden, which I don't understand how weather works. I don't understand how body temperature works, man. One second I'm warm, one second I'm cold, and the other, I'm just losing my mind. Anyway, camera work is getting horrible again. Sorry, I'm just ranting about my own problems, which is not what I'm actually here to do. I, well, part of me wants to be here to do that, but I'm more here to talk about the game. As you see that, Fort going down. Camp is being done just below it. We just look down here as we saw the Ufa W just kind of poke through a bit. However, 16s are through for CM Breaking Meta. Would have seemed like maybe a more aggressive push there. However, Dan Solo is bullied in a bit of trouble. We do see the unstop coming out, so they are actually able to live. He is Leoric is such a hard one to kill for that regard. If you are a um, CC style comp, Leoric's Ghost Walkers makes it so much more difficult for you to kill him, especially, what build are we for Leoric? We're not Ghost Build, but we're still, he's still a Wraith. <laughs> that is stun, that is a stun, that's leap into, that's leap into Snowstorm, that's an Entomb hitting just a turret, as we did see both healers go down for the side of Gambit Gaming, which is unfortunate, especially now with objective being called in 2, 1. And we do see now a Mortar Punisher being called bot lane. Oof. Not quite the timing you want if you are Gambit Gaming. It is defendable. By no means you're out of this. You do at least have 16s now. You're able to get through. We do have a look at talents real quick. We see... Good. Benediction picked up by Ufa. We see Polymorph. For, okay. Brightwing is allowing more burst. And we do see Drain Build coming alive for the Auric. Like, it's a pretty standard thing. I'm just going to leave it open while this kind of all happens. Just so everyone can get a good look at what talents are avail uh, picked up by each team. Because I'm not going to call out the red team's talents as we're taking 10 years to do it. Oh, not all of them. I like how I like how decisive you for was like, yes. Good. He's like, I know what I'm picking. Everyone else like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. Not quite sure. Figuring out slowly. But no, here we are. As we do see now, the side of Gambit Gaming is being pushed into by a Mortar Punisher and the full five man of CM Breaking Meta as the first tower goes down. And Probius is doing his best to kill. That tower just disappeared. Doing his best to kill stuff. We do see May gets hit by Troll and Rhino. Phase shift comes out to Wipeout, meaning that Wipeout won't be quite taken down. Ancestral is used on the Orphea, but won't quite grow, down, grow out fully. That's a 10 second cooldown now. And that is a good entomb by Dan Solo. However, pulled in by Skycake. Does manage to Wraith walk out, so they aren't pulled back in by the Warden's Cage. And then they manage to take this punish, it, punish for a little walkabout. I like how Trollin was doing a little dance and got pulled back in because of this stun. As Ezo will go down as well. That is the second time in a row where... Ancestral was used, but wasn't able to quite take down the target they required. As that will be Core going down as well. And that will be the second game going over the side of CM Breaking Meta. GG to both sides as they call GG to each other. So let me jump it on over to my game summary screen. As we have final look. Again, it wasn't too high a damage game. My have actually popped off. I... My Eve's one of the characters I wish I could play. <laughs> I'm not good at my Eve. I also think my ping probably says, no, you can't play my Eve. But 55k damage into that is quite nice. Pearl Simmon did as much as they could on Orphea, but 
with a Maev engage into kind of a May follow up, there's a lot that meant that as much as you wanted a hyper carry, just as soon as they jumped on, there was not enough in the world that can kind of save you from a full dive like that. Like, D-Shield kind of needed to be used on them every fight, or Ancestral needed to be used on them like almost every fight. It was just a bit too much for both Krizo and Izo to handle. However, it was still very good showing from both teams. It is um, it was a fun game to watch and cast. Because it was another 2-0, what I may do, if the bit I'm getting, I'm getting extra spicy now, I'm going to actually look at doing another replay cast, maybe in the next few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself on mute, put on some music. I'm going to keep up the um, score screen a bit because I'm going to go to... Actually, I'm not going to put myself off immediately. I'm going to quickly move this just to show you kind of what happened in this match. We did see that it was indeed a 2-0 to the side of CM Breaking Meta, taking out both um, Dragonshire and Infernal Shrines. However, if we were to do this again, it still could very much go in Gambit Gaming's way. Like, by no means would I say that each map was a total blowout. It, is, it was competitive. So, I'm going to put myself onto mute, put on some music, and we're going to get a fourth game. Potentially. We'll see. I'll say something if you're not, but I'll be right back. <laughs> 